Okay, cool. so this is it. All right. Uh, yeah, everybody, welcome to the Waymo Depot. Uh, this is my tour guide. I'm and, Wes, uh, Wes Stecker, the Phoenix Ride Hailing Ops Market Lead. Awesome. Very glad to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, glad to have <laughs> really you. Really cool opportunity. For sure. So we're going to jump into the main depot here in just a second. We'll start with Suite 104, which is where we kind of originated our operations out of Mesa, and then we'll walk over to 109 where we're expanding to. So. Awesome. Go ahead and jump in here. You want to walk that way. So you can immediately see that it kind of opens up into this big space where we've got a mixture of parking, charging, people. So we've got our security area here, which is always monitored and they're monitoring all of the entries and exits. Our MK, uh, our MK is where all of our operations folks hang out and they start their day, kind of get their paperwork and their computer work done. And they can also get snacks and relax during their breaks and stuff. Um, behind us, you'll see the tech area. So this is where we work on all of our self-driving systems, so our SDS. And this particularly is for SDS systems, not for our base vehicle stuff. Uh, vehicles that are over here are either in meal break. Um, they've either just finished charging or they're about to be charging, and they're about to head out on their mission, or they've just been prepped for their upcoming mission. So this is all kind of our staging area. You can see our chargers along the wall over there. So we'll walk you through there. Any questions about cool. that? Um, yeah, this looks really awesome. Okay. I was, I was kind of wondering what the charging situation looked like when when you go from uh, you know internal combustion to electric vehicle and maybe some of the, the ways you do things changes. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, if you want to walk that way, I can show you some of that. Sure. Um, so they'll typically charge at about 60 kilowatts and um, we can put one vehicle on one. It doesn't take very long for them to be ready. Um, they can charge during the meal break. Uh, they can charge before and after. So we've got a lot of flexibility there. Wow. This is kind of our little lounge area where some of the drivers hang out and debrief after missions or before uh, get set up. So. Behind you is our inventory area. So we have a lot of security that, this is our temporary setup, I should say, of our inventory area. Um, security around keys and logging systems, so they check in and out. And then we're going to be moving this position over into 109, which you'll see here in just a bit. Cool. High-speed roll-up doors, this one's the exit. So they always go out the same way, they always come in the same way, keep our traffic flow going the same direction. So, so uh, when you send a car out, does somebody get in, drive it, and then push the button and do it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Then, so once we leave here, they get into what we call localization. So that's where the car begins to kind of prep up and be ready for its mission. So they'll do that out there and uh, hit the engage and be off. Cool. So, yeah. That's incredible. Cool. Let's walk on over this sure. way. I don't want to. Feel free to stop yeah. me along the way if you have any questions about anything that you yeah. see. I'm just taking it in. Yeah, yeah. for sure. <laughs> that's. Uh, it's cool to see the all the, the spinning stuff just at a, at rest. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Pretty much any time uh, that it's on, regardless of whether it's being used actively or not, it's going to be spinning to take in the data to be prepared for when it does head out. Um, obviously, these are you know being charged while the SDS isn't on, so mm -hmm. they're not spinning actively. So again, we can kind of charge twelve cars at once if we want to. Um, right up is where kind of our day-to-day -day, um, operations happen with our vendor partners, uh, mm -hmm. which is TransDev. So they're um, autonomous vehicle operations supervisors. This is the area that they work in. Hey guys. And uh, they oversee their staff, um, their performance management of their staff, and the operations that head out of here on a daily basis. This is a great place for them uh, because they get to connect with folks as they're heading out before they uh, hit the road for their mission. That's this awesome. is again a temporary area that we're going to show you a little bit more about where they're going to be in the next one over there. So even though it looks a little makeshift, it's because yeah. <laughs> we're heading into the new spot. That's cool. It's uh, seeing the, the USB-C docks and stuff. Yeah. yeah. It's cool. Yeah. This is our, all of our materials coordination. So um, 
basically a safe place to keep supplies when they're coming or going from the building. Okay. Is um, is there rider support and fleet response around, or that's at that our that's at our channel facility. Channel? Yeah. Okay. Yep. So they're housed out of another vehicle. This is kind of like our vehicle operations and people um, that are on the road. Okay. Uh, this is kind of the main hub of our operations here. So we don't do any ride hailing um, missions out of that location right now. Okay. It's all based out here. Cool. So anytime a car comes in and needs to be checked on, do their regular inspections, whatever they may, may come in for, this is where they go. This is the tech area where they wow. pull into. Um, generally, when they come in here, they've got a couple of decisions. One, they can pull in and go to general parking. Two, they can go to the tech area where they get checked up, inspections, things like that where they can go into their meal break and charging area. So this is the tech area. This is where they do all the magic. It's very, very organized, very laid out, very thought through. Yeah, so of course, I, you know, I wouldn't even imagine this. This is awesome. Yeah, so this is a pretty cool spot. There's a lot of neat things that happen here. You can kind of see that the main, main focus, obviously, is the JLR and our Jaguar um, platform. So yeah. we've also got a great partnership with our AutoNation uh, team. So. This section in here is for um, base vehicle uh, work. So they'll do a lot of our wheels and tires, um, all of our alignments, windshields, um, all of the base vehicle stuff that happens is, happens in here with their team. So you can kind of see their, their space here. They actually have more lifts in here than we do, so. That's, that's, yeah, I, I, when I was thinking about how, the, how this kind of whole operation would work, I, I kind of like it made sense that you would have people in house mm -hmm. that kind of that do that. So, yeah. Yeah, it's the next iteration because previously we didn't. So we worked with them on their availability at their sites. This has been a great partnership and it's definitely made work on our vehicles a lot smoother. That's awesome. So, heading into here is kind of the new and improved, uh, the next phase, I guess, if you will, of our uh, parking and our operations here. So, gets a little quieter because there's soundproofing on the walls but um, what we've done in here is we've expanded to allow for more parking we're also uh, i'll walk this way once we get mm -hmm. down one of these aisles but we're opening up another mk for drivers to hang out and either debrief or pre-brief we've got more restrooms and office spaces and then our mission delivery which is our dispatch is going to shift its focus over here as well and so there'll be desks over here and I'll show you that spot in just a minute. But this is obviously where the, the you know, main parking area for our vehicles yeah. is. So this is, uh, again, one of the expansion areas that we're going into. Um, all of our drivers will be able to make use of this area um, within a few weeks once we've upfit the Wi-Fi and all the other amenities that you can see yeah. that we're still growing into here. Uh, this is basically just an extension of what we had over there. Okay. Um, this is all stuff that we're going to be cleaning out. It's um, more furniture and things that we're uh, putting together for the expansion. So. That's awesome. Then as we go down this way, uh, we're getting to uh, some more office spaces, restrooms, and then I'll show you kind of how our setup looks for dispatching and uh, our partnership with our uh, trans dev team. Okay. Uh, I was wondering if you could, what is that little post? Yeah, these uh, are uh, sensor calibration um, uh, targets. Um, oh, okay. We're actually, they're actually outdated and we're um, removing them once we get the new lane lines painted and everything. Uh, okay. So this parking configuration is all temporary right now. Um, once we've got everything set up in there, then we'll um, remove those. Yeah. Do you expect that it, a lot of this would be done autonomously later? Or is that oh, just yeah. like a like a ROI thing where it's like doesn't make sense? or? Yeah, that's uh, definitely like next phase for sure. Next, yep. More scale wise. Okay. And, and just to unpack it a little bit more, these posts historically we've been doing these and other things, you know, just to calibrate the sensors before we send them out. Um, but as part of becoming a more scaled operation, we want to basically have these cars be able to calibrate themselves automatically right. using a much more efficient thing where you don't have to rely on um, specific obstacles placed in specific locations. So yeah. that's kind of where we're moving with a lot of that, that specific thing, and then many other things to just try to make it more scalable. Is that, um, so I thought there was a picture posted uh, where there was what was like a, a, like a circle with some like black, black shape sections on it, like on the wall of like the Chandler Depot. 
I think is that like for like a camera thing, yeah. similar yeah, situation? Yeah, that's yeah, so. so. yeah. well, right? Yeah. With the Gene Wilder, yeah. I like how you just know everything. With the, <laughs> <laughs> that's what Gene Wilder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a big yeah, yeah, sticker yeah, so. of Gene Wilder on the oh, wall yeah, under it. Yeah. That was. I was like, I zoomed in on it. What is? Yeah. Anyway. Yep. Was, Steve Nash <laughs> has been known to be uh, <laughs> spotted every once in a while at one of the uh, depots too. Oh, that's uh, cool. Cardboard cutout. Yeah. I shouldn't. I shouldn't. <laughs> <have that. laughs> yeah. These are our meeting rooms that we use. Uh, they're still being finished out, so they're locked right now because of the equipment inside them. Okay. Yeah. So like typical like remote camera meeting stuff. Kind yeah. Of. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Like uh, WebEx, Cisco yeah. WebEx stuff. Yeah. Uh, we're at, we're at or, or, oh. you know, Google oh, Video. Oh, yeah. yeah, okay. I'm thinking of a different company that I worked at that did that. Oh, okay. uh, <laughs> so, yeah, this is our shared workspace with our vendor partners. So, um, obviously, all of this over here would be seating for our vendors to be at so that we can work closely with them. They'll be So that space that we went through earlier is where they'll transition over here from. Um, they'll still have some folks out there to kind of see as they head out the door, all that thing, but uh, this will be the kind of their main workspace. And then... We just have someone working though, so if you oh, don't... Yeah. Right. You, don't, yeah. you okay? We, we distracting you, you okay? Uh, I'll go ahead okay. and uh, not show that, but yeah. And then this over here is our Waymo side, so we've got um, desks that we're going to open up for visiting engineers, uh, product, and everybody else development. And then our dispatching team will be sitting over here as well, working from there. Can you talk about kind of what dis dispatching yeah. is like? Or what is, uh, what's the role of that? Yeah, concept? I mean, we're basically just um, helping facilitate in partnership with our transit partners, the coming and going of every mission that we do on a daily basis. So all the cars that go out for testing purposes, including our services, which are the driverless services. Mm -hmm. um, so all of that happens in coordination with uh, our dispatching team. So they'll be 24-7. Um, they'll be on calls uh, helping yeah. with any kind of like needs that the teams may have. And they'll be yeah just supporting our fleets in the field. So. That's awesome. Yeah. But you can see, I mean, one thing you should recognize here, we can recognize here is like there are not that many desks compared to the number of vehicles that are right. here. Right, yeah. And a lot of this is that... We need. We do need to like. We need to clean the cars. We need to prep them. Make sure everything is in order with them before we send them out. But we want to have a system where a small number of people can basically unlock a large fleet of these vehicles that can go out and be serving all their trips. And they just kind of come back and they get their charge. They get whatever they need whenever the yeah. need arises. That's yeah. Being able to take that from just a few to like thousands. Yeah. So that's something that's really yeah, that's neat right. challenge. I would imagine mm -hmm. um, when you get to like full city size. Mm -hmm like full metropolitan area. It's like, this uh, this building is pretty big, but I don't know if it can hold like 5,000 cars, you know? Like, yeah. like at, the, at some at some point, like, what, what what changes when you get like a lot, a lot of cars? And like, yeah. do you have uh, stuff like this and then just parking lots, so like huge, or well, I, don't, I don't even know. Yeah, yeah, good question. I mean, I think we're, we're we, so this would be a main hub, right? Mm -hmm. So main hub of our facility. So not everything would have to necessarily be like this, but most of our vehicles would be out serving customers, making the rounds and things like that. Um, we could operate in other smaller locations too, like we do in San Francisco where there's mm -hmm. smaller uh, like spoke-like locations that don't have right. the tech, that don't have the things. And so um, if they need to charge, they could go in there and do their charging. If they needed to have their inspection or you know a quick cleanup, those types of things. So yeah. there could be different aspects that could serve different purposes, but this would be an example of where, like for Phoenix, we may have this and then have a few other spots that are smaller. Oh, okay. Yeah. And our, our vision would be that we're keeping these cars busy as much as possible. Yeah. That they're serving riders or they're serving delivery trips, whatever it might be, so that we are um, making the best use of all of these assets. And so that that's a lot of what we're doing. Like we have a delivery pilot that we're doing right now. Um, where we're actually carrying groceries for employees. Um, oh. and we're, um, we're also uh, uh, just exploring other partnerships in the delivery space as well. So um, yeah. all of this is kind of in the scope of what we're trying to think about. I've seen some uh, Way Waymo via Pacificas yeah. uh, just kind of around, but not too many. But that, that's really cool to hear that's yeah. expanding.